Hi, I'm Greg Lamb, the Small Biz Doer. As part of the Cloud Accounting Comparison Series I write and produce for the Sleater Group, today I'm reviewing QuickBooks Online's revamped banking page. Recently, QuickBooks Online revamped its banking page for the better. And when I say QuickBooks Online, I'm referring to the new Harmony version, not the classic, or as I like to say, ugly version. I should also point out that only those in the US have received this release as of mid-February 2014. Depending on when you're watching this and where you are and what version you're using, you may not be able to see these improvements. This is all part of QuickBooks Online's slow, cautious, and, who are we kidding, confusing approach to rolling out features. Who takes a year to roll out a new interface to all users? Okay, focus Greg. You're here to talk about the banking page. Yes, the banking page. I really like what QuickBooks has done, sincerely. So let's check it out by going to Transactions, then Banking. As we can see, the interface has been cleaned up. It's touch-friendly, to either the pleasure or chagrin of the user, depending on their preferred modus operandi. I like it, so no complaints over here. But if you're one of those complainers, click on the Settings icon and compact it. I don't know why I'd hide the columns, they all seem important, but 300 rows of transactions? Oh yeah. But I'm getting ahead of myself, let's look at the top. We can toggle between accounts by clicking on them. If we need to upload a file or update our feed, we can do it here. And for those complainers, I, I mean power users who want more room, you can hit this arrow and get it. I'm just kidding by the way, I'm a power user and love this ability to reshape the page and pack more data in. So let's start off by clicking on a transaction. This pops open a more detailed view. We can either add a transaction, find a match, or create a transfer, which is a new ability. Splits are as easy as clicking the split button. One thing I still can't do is enter a negative amount into the split, which means I lose a bit of flexibility if I want to deduct something, like a bank fee. I would also like to see the option to add sales taxes to income transactions from this view. Many transactions where money is being received involves charging taxes, so the emittance of this ability seems a bit odd to me. I do like the find match feature. I find it generally did a good job of letting me match up payments for invoices or bills, as well as items sitting in undeposited funds. It's also good that I can pare down the matches by date or by using the search box. We're also able to select multiple matches at a time, which is nice to see. And if there's a discrepancy, we can make an adjustment here. This is nice. Of course though, you don't have to manually do this type of work. QuickBooks will try and find a match for a transaction or try to categorize it. If there is a match found, we can click on the transaction and then see the suggested match. If we don't like the suggestion, we can try and find a match ourselves. To accept, we click on match. Here is a bit of a bug I've discovered. Even though we matched this entered transaction already, it'll show up as an option, like here. However, if we try to match this too, we'll get an error. So after matching a transaction, a refresh may need to be done in order to see an update of possible matches. To agree with QuickBooks's auto categorizations or matches, all we have to do is click on Accept. If we want to work on multiple transactions at once, we can use the checkbox to select all the ones we like, then go to Batch Actions and accept them, exclude them, or categorize them. We're also able to reorganize our view by date, description, spent, or received. I can see this coming in handy especially if there were 300 rows of data. Let's go to another tab in QuickBooks. This shows us all the transactions that have been categorized or matched. If we want to drill down into any of these entered transactions, we can click on the link and it'll pull up or does it pop out? Pull down? I don't know. But here's the transaction. When we close it, we quickly get back to the in QuickBooks tab. If we do decide to undo a match, we have to be a bit careful it doesn't always show up as an option to match again. Let's unmatch this and this. If we go over to New Transactions, this $50,000 transaction should have a match. Whether or not a match is offered kind of depends on whether you've performed a reconciliation already or not. If you have, then you need to get to the register and unreconcile it, as undoing a match doesn't unreconcile a transaction. To do this, we click on Register, Choose our bank account 
and find the offending transactions. It's these ones. We can unreconcile them by clicking on them so that this field is blank. Now if we go back to transactions, they still don't show, but if we click on match, they magically appear. I don't think too many people will run into this, but just in case you do, that's the workaround that I found. Moving on, let's go to the excluded tab. If we accidentally excluded a transaction, we can always get it back by clicking undo. This wasn't available before and it's nice to have this option. Overall, I like what QuickBooks has done with the banking page. It's a big improvement. Is it everything I want it to be? No. I'd like to be able to add taxes to income, have better control over matching, and in general, make this page even more powerful. All one has to do is look over to Zero to see what they've done with their banking page to get some more ideas. But again, solid progress with QuickBooks Online. I'm happy to see these positive changes. If you'd like to read this article and much more great content, please visit the QuickBooks and Beyond blog at slater.com slash blog. All right, this is Greg Lamb, the Small Biz Doer, signing out. Catch you on the flip side.